Hi everybody, this is Andre from the DIY bench. Um, today I'm talking about my microwave oven transformer spot welder. Now I mean there is a lot of forums out there, there's a lot of videos on YouTube and at a lot of other places that you can have a look at these discussions. And I mean in the beginning I had a lot of failures trying to build a spot welder and you just need as much info as you can get. And I think the most important thing to me, after a lot of experimentation, is the cable. I mean, a lot of forums, a lot of videos, especially a lot of videos out there, recommend the thickest cable that you can find, which is probably something like this. I'm not sure about the gauge, but you can see it's 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 a really thick cable. Now, I mean, this cable um, will run around the transformer, and I mean, there's not much space there, but you'll probably get it through. I managed to do it twice, and it is as tight as it's going to be, and you're not going to get anything else through there. So, after reading on a forum that you should try and get as many wines through the, the, the core, uh, you know, it got me thinking and um, there was a video that I also watched that somebody else made. And at the end of the day, if you, if you put in the thick cable, you really don't get much voltage out. I mean, I mean, I've seen welders that actually do the trick and it actually welds. But, um, I mean, in my case, I really battled. And I could only get, um, if, if you energize the, the welder, I could really only get, jeez, I think maybe 1.5 volt or maybe 2 volts, nothing more than that. And somebody mentioned that, you know, well, that is just too low. You're not going to get anywhere with that. And then I decided to just get the cable. As you can see here. And it really looks very thin, but I mean, there's a lot of copper in there. And I'm, I'll show you the difference. As you can see, there's a big difference. But um, with this thing of cable, yeah, I mean, look at the transformer, that, and you can see you now I've really managed to um, to get a, quite a few wines on there. I'm not sure I didn't count back then, but it's not only two, and the difference that makes. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to switch it on. And I'm going to show you the voltage I'm getting out of here. And as you can see, it really is very close to 5 volts. And the difference between 1.5 volts and 5 volts to weld is really, it, it makes all the difference. And I'm going to show you now the weld I'm getting. And I'm just going to show you one more time there. And it, I mean, it, it didn't. It wasn't something I thought about. Well, somebody mentioned, but the higher you can get the voltage, the better. You know, we're not all engineers, so you, you you need all the information you can get. And after this modification by um, winding as many, putting as many winds on there as, as, as I could get on there. Uh, the world that just seemed to come alive. Um, I'm gonna put the camera back here. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, a couple of cells here. I just wanna do this like that. I really apologize if there's shadows. Um, so I'm putting. Um, the spot welder, the lowest setting, which is, I mean, it's just really a fraction of a second. I'm not, I'm not sure how. 
and I'm just gonna weld this one. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way. There we go. It might just a little bit be too short. I'll just see now. Sorry, that is not enough. I'm just going to turn it up. I think that's better. I'm going to try it again. No, I think that's a little too much. I'm just going to turn it down. And that's the thing with these welders, you have to experiment. But um, now it works well. And there we go. I think that's more like the way it should be. Just gonna give it another weld. Um, one year. Okay, let's have a look. I mean, as you can see, the weld time makes all the difference, and it's quite strong. So. Um, that made all the difference in this welder that I built. Um, just gonna bring the camera around. And I'm gonna show you. Um, so, my first recommendation: just wanna switch on off if you're gonna build a spot welder. Is try and get as many ones on there. I would not go thinner than this cable. Um, you really can. Um, there's another welder that I bought that I've managed to get 12 volts out of. And obviously that is just great because it really just, it just works. Um, so that's one thing I did. I changed the cable um, to get as many winds on as I could. And I think it's really worthwhile building a timer circuit. I'm not sure if you will be able to see it. Um, I really apologize if my fans are in the way. I've got a timer circuit at the back, uh, which obviously you adjust with uh, the potentiometer on the front panel. And I've got another circuit board here, which is really just a 5 volt. Um, cell phone charger that I've taken out of its case and that just supplies power to the timer circuit so the timer circuit can be used to switch the, your, your welder on and off um, and I really think that um, because you I mean you can always go and just use a push button that'll work but um, you know when it comes to fine adjustment um, as you could see just now when I was welding, you know, if you can just turn the time a little bit, uh, make the, 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 the welding cycle longer, it will make your life easier, just step on it, it completes the welding cycle and it switches off. Even if you keep your feet uh, or your one foot on the, on the, um, the foot switch, um, it, the, the timing circuit will switch off. Um, so I think Putting a timing circuit in and getting enough winds on your your transformer is absolutely crucial. Another thing I have to mention is like when you have connections like I've got in here, I'm not sure if you can see them. Um, I mean it, it, it's it's um, it's quite a set of two really big bolts. You've got to make sure it makes perfect contact. And you're going to make sure it's copper. And the same here on the outside. You're going to make sure your connection is really good. And obviously, and the tip side of it, um, you've got to make sure that you, your, your screws are well tightened down. And the last thing, and I mean, I've seen in, in most videos that I've seen is um, everybody's got um, copper, um, copper tips some sort um, I'm using copper nails pure copper nails 
uh, they work well. You know, if you try and take shortcuts by taking just a piece of, like, um, let's say take another nail, just a mild steel nail, it's not going to work. You're going to have copper as your welding tips. And, I mean, I think once you've got those things in place, but again, I'm just, um, I cannot mention how important it is that you get as many winds on here as possible to push your your uh, voltage on the secondary side to at least 5 volts the higher you can get it the better but obviously you're not gonna um, try and push it way up because I mean um, the voltage that comes out is limited by your by the amount of winding so if you can get 13, 14 volts out of there, I think you will have a fantastic welder. But um, I'm gonna leave in the description, I'm gonna leave um, Gary Wong's uh, website details. Um, there's a very good description there on what he did, and obviously um, the timing circuit that I've got in here, uh, I've modified it slightly, but uh, the principle is the same. Um, uh, you don't have to have the timer, I just think it makes your life much easier and by using a foot pedal at the front, you know, you will just make your life much easier as well. You just plug it in and plug it out and I'm just going to show you it runs down and here it is, you just step on it, it will complete the world cycle and it will switch off, even if you keep your feet, or oh, sorry, your one foot. Um, on the switch it will still switch us off. I really hope this information here was uh, useful and that somebody else out there can really uh, benefit from it. I thank you all. This is Andre from the DIY Bench. Cheers.